tiny island in the Caribbean, there once lived a rat twice the size of a man. Its very existence is a nightmare and a mystery. The answer is guarded by a death trap, a murky chasm that leads into the unknown depths and unmapped past of the island of giant rats. One of the tiniest jewels in the Caribbean Sea is Anguilla. Called the Rock, it's a lump of limestone covering just 34 square miles. Its long, thin shape accounts for its name. Anguilla is Spanish for eel. But perhaps the island is named for the wrong creature. A hundred thousand years ago, the king of Anguilla's jungle was a rat as big as a bear. Fascinated by this prehistoric mystery, three fossil hunters set out to find the giant rodent called Amblyriza. Donald McFarland is a biologist from Claremont College in California. Get the bigger bit here. <laughs> <laughs> Ross McPhee is a mammologist from the American Museum of Natural History in New York. Claire Fleming is his research assistant. This is the end of a journey that began when two scientists each read of an ancient rodent almost a thousand times bigger than a modern rat. Both wondered how an animal so large could thrive on an island so small and why it finally disappeared. There is a great deal of romance to paleontology, and to hear about a rodent that was the size of a bear interested me greatly. I had to go and find it for myself. In the Caribbean, most fossils have been worn away by sun and rain, except those sheltered in caves. Yet if there were fossils here, the sea got to them first. A farmer suggested searching near a large pitch apple tree rooted above a damp cave. The undergrowth was overgrown, but they found the tree by its dark green leaves. Pitch apple hole is a natural trap 70 feet deep. No one knew what lay down there, only that if a creature fell in, there was no way out. had come here, but none dared risk the fate of the curious. McFarlane has an advantage. He not only knows caves, he knows how to climb down into them. Okay. Well, it's about equally bad by by rope or by ladder. No problem. I'll get you down. You sure we're gonna find some ambly rise down there? The chances are good. We didn't finish it off before. Okay, I think we're ready. Right. Without an expert along. No one would try this. One slip could be fatal. If the fall didn't kill you, time would. The descent is such an ordeal that no one will go back up till the end of the day, 12 hours away.
The fossil hunters are working a cold trail. The giant rat Amblyriza hasn't been tracked in half a century. Pitch Apple Hole began as a cavern. For centuries, groundwater slowly hollowed out the limestone. Inevitably, the roof fell in, turning the cave into a pit and a trap. You bringing another bucket, Don? Thanks. A little pocket of bone in here, underneath all of this breakdown. A bit deeper than the other stuff. Then. Right. So it's another place where we can expect to find a few bones. Um, riser. Clearly, these animals were in here before this roof collapsed. Iguana. The humidity reaches 90%, and the temperature passes 90 degrees. The cave is swarming with mosquitoes, sand flies, and the stench of bat guano. Pitch Apple Hall may once have been a maze of grottos, but after the roof fell in, earth gradually heaped up, and any passages out were sealed off. There's a tooth. The cave is now a dead end. Within hours, the fossil hunters hit rock. Under the rock, they may find their quarry, a creature trapped down here long ago, covered over time by earth and shielded from erosion ever since. The rocks are too heavy to lift. McFarlane will try to blast them apart. For the sake of any fossils, as well as the fossil hunters, he uses a small amount of explosive. Underneath the rock, the fossil hunters have struck pay dirt. Mm -hmm.